The folks, you're tuned to KRCL 90.9 FM. Live on the phone with me right now is legendary comedian Doug Stanhope. Thanks for joining me, Doug. Legendary. Fantastic. Yeah, you, you like that? <laughs> I, was, I was unaware up until now. Uh, apparently, well, you're the most famous person that's been on this show. Um, you just barely beat out uh, Buckner and Garcia. I, you know what? Uh, if they're legends, I'm not familiar with their work. <laughs> they're, they're the guys that wrote Pac-Man Fever back in the early 80s. <laughs> That's oh. the, the last people I interviewed that that weren't just locals. <laughs> Were they playing in town as well? <laughs> no, you know what? They're like, they write advertising jingles. I couldn't get them to come out and play on the show. I was bummed. Oh, if, if they're the guys who did the freecreditreport.com <laughs> jingles, I would love to find their addresses. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get really really mental with stuff like that. I, I I've actually googled the guy that the actor from that commercial. His name's Eric Violet or something from Montreal. So when I fantasize about killing someone, I want to know I can. <laughs> <laughs> so that the, that jingle really gets on your nerves. I take it. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. Mm. <laughs> It's one of my it's one of my biggest problems in life. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes on when you're hung over like watching football in the, or something and you're like Yeah, it seems to be on everything that I watch. Somehow I'm the demographic for those douchebags. <laughs> 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 yes, everything <laughs> that it just shows you how little I do with my life. I know when I'm getting upset about stuff like that that it's a, a, just a a glaring mirror reflection of how little I do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've gotten far without doing a whole lot then. Yeah, it's been a really easy life. I've been on vacation pretty much the whole time. Uh, that's excellent. I've been drunk for about 28 years. <laughs> uh, what's, your, uh, what's your poison of choice? Uh, yeah, it depends. If I'm on the road, I, if I'm doing shows, I just uh, pretty much stick to beers and then Jägermeisters during the show. But uh, but when I'm at home, I, I, I'm a vodka man. The only problem, you, you start ordering mixed drinks on the road you know, before a show, and you don't know how much they're going to try to impress you at the bar. So you only had two cocktails, but they put eight shots of vodka in each one, well, and then you're a <laughs> rambling mess. <laughs> you're, you're lucky coming to Utah. The the bartenders can only give you one ounce. They can find ways. I'm sure they can. Uh, this is uh, some flavoring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that state is an overrun. You, all you need is one really hot chick that's willing with AIDS that could wipe out most of the Mormon hierarchy <laughs> and expose them for the hypocrites they are at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much damage you could do with a <laughs> one chick with a great sense of humor and AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> we have these. Uh, we we have uh, you know po politicians, Mormon politicians, get busted for DUI every once in a while, and it's incredible. Uh, you know they're they 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 quit the next day. But uh, the kind of people I'd want to go out and drink with and but see what's... Yeah, they're, they're, their whole douche support system, they, uh, all they have to do is do a Ted Haggard apology and they're all is forgiven. That's why AIDS, <laughs> AIDS doesn't forgive. I'm sorry, this is my new plan. <laughs> this is awesome. I can't... <laughs> I, ser <laughs> I search online and Facebook for funny hot chick with AIDS. <laughs> You haven't a found that on Craigslist ad. yet. What answers? <laughs> I have AIDS, but I'm not really hot anymore. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does tend to decimate your <laughs> your appearance. I want early stage AIDS. Just, now I'm getting picky. Just some fresh HIV, maybe. <laughs> Do you, uh, you come to Utah often? Have you have you performed here very much? Yeah, I, I, I try to come once a year. I don't, I don't like going places closer than that because I want to have new material when I get back, mm. even though my audiences are, are generally drunk enough that they forget everything I say. So next time I could, I could probably do the same act for 20 years. <laughs> 
uh, I notice you're you're coming to Bar Deluxe. If anybody yeah. is interested, uh, it's on six 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 South State Street, or at least it was. I think they might have changed the 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 address by a digit or so to. Because... No, it's still six six six. Yes. Yeah, you'd think they'd uh, they'd take that out of a Mormon community the same way they take thirteen off of elevators. <laughs> well, uh, they have uh, they changed it to six six eight for a little while, but I think they just you know two several people died in that place. Uh, I've yeah, I've died a couple times. There. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you set me up for anything. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, uh, like, just random deaths, or no? I think uh, there was a, a, a bartender got stabbed, and the place got robbed in the early nineties. Uh, somebody, a, one of the owners there, got shot. Uh, uh, I worked there one night, running the door, and noticed that. And it was uh, t- fifteen years ago. I worked there for one night, helping a band out. It was called something else, though. It was different it was, people. It was, yeah, it was total different bar. Yeah, wasn't it Emos or Elmos or something? It, it was, there was Shaggies and I think Emos and the Green Guinea. I know Guinea. I did coke in the basement when someone else owned it. Yeah, there was an owner there that uh, was selling crack down in that creepy basement. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty creepy place I, to be I, doing blow with strangers. <laughs> Homeless people kept coming off the street and being, I was like, there's a $5 cover charge. And they're like, no, we need to talk to the owner. <laughs> All right, go down in the basement. Wow, lots of homeless people filling out applications this week, Paul. <laughs> but now it's a very clean, upstanding business. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, there was no blow last time. Uh, well, you never know. It's supposed to snow this weekend. <laughs> All right. So uh, why uh, why come to and why perform in a bar uh, versus a comedy club? Do they have better drinks? Well, it's a it's it's a more uh, chaotic, raucous atmosphere. Usually, comedy clubs in general are like movie theaters where you know people sit down at their little table and they get their jalapeno poppers and you know you you play a regular you know rock and roll club. It's a uh, it's more energy, it's better money, uh, and and you don't get people walking off the street thinking it's just going to be another you know. Brian Regan or whatever. No, no offense to Brian Regan, but <laughs> but a lot of people go to comedy clubs. If a comedy club is booking, you know, mainstream Jay Leno type of acts, uh, generally people will just show up having no idea who they're going to see, and then you, they see an act like mine and they get all pissed off because they brought their company Christmas party out without doing any investigation whatsoever, and then they act like you're a dick somehow. <laughs> Like you're the <laughs> you're the lazy one. I mean, you wouldn't do that with any f- other form of entertainment. You wouldn't go. Oh, you want to go to a concert tonight? I don't know who's playing. I have no earthly idea. We'll just show up at the stadium, and it'll be potluck. <laughs> <laughs> and so you show up, and it's an evening of bagpipe music. Who's Lloyd to though? The bagpipe player? No, you. It's your fault. <laughs> You, you you work five days to get two in return, and then you put absolutely no no effort into investigating what you're going to go see. You would you wouldn't just show up at a movie theater and just go oh, whatever door is closest. I don't care what the movie is. Do you did you enjoy when uh, you know people would come in and get upset or get yes, offended? Yes, way too much. <laughs> <laughs> when I was working comedy clubs, I was very self destructive. Oh. <laughs> so how how long have you been doing the comedy circuit? It's uh be twenty years in August. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's anything I haven't said at this point. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, think... that internet. You learn something new every day. <laughs> Me and my buddy were getting ready to go out to the bar. We were watching some of your stuff, and uh, that's all we could talk about the rest of the night. I think we offended a lot of people, so I I hope it helps you. I can't imagine how people still get offended in this day and age. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, uh, hey, the dog's promoting the show. The, That's right, Fluffy. <laughs> good dog. Good Saturday dog. Saturday night at eight o'clock at Bar Deluxe. <laughs> Folks, this good is good plug, Mister Bimble. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, have you have you started drinking yet today? No, no, because uh, uh, I've been off for two months, 
And I uh, uh, liver cleaning. No, no, I've been drinking heavily. Oh. I just haven't been <laughs> working. So yeah, this week I've <laughs> really had to like sit down and go, all right, what the hell did I used to say <laughs> that was funny? How do these bits work? <laughs> How does comedy work again? But uh, yeah, no, that time off is very necessary to actually live life. During this last time off, is there anything that's uh, uh, via the media, the internet, anything that's that's happened that's uh, improved? It's that's going to improve your show. Well, you know what I, <laughs> I I was I wasn't in mourning when a guy flew a plane into an IRS building. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't weeping any tears. It's, just, it's, it's something you can really build on there. I, yeah, that's all, that's always yeah, that's always a, the great things in comedy, and they always happen when I'm off. Like every time I take time off, that's when the you know tsunami kills two hundred thousand, and earthquake in Haiti, and you're going ah, sh- say sh- why didn't this happen during the middle of a road trip? It would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, do, do you think you're too? Do you get worried of being uh, being too far past a, an event where you're just gonna? Be... Well, it's just it's the nature of the media where you get whatever the story of the day is is bombarded. That's the only thing happening in the world is Haiti or Katrina or whatever it is. And then as soon as they you know get a total body count, they move on to something else. And so by the time you've been bombarded with Balloon Boy. Yeah, you know, if I come come to your town two weeks later to talk about Balloon Boy, you're already getting hammered over the head with some whatever the news story is. So it's not that people forget; it's just it's it, it makes things dated quicker. Mm. So uh, anything and that... it, it annoys people almost because you do get so sick of hearing about all this garbage. You know, because they overkill everything that if you start talking about it as a comedian, you're just piling on. So is there anything that you can say maybe about Sarah Palin that would get her upset enough? Sarah Palin was dead in the water before she didn't get elected. Uh, I was just hoping maybe you could say something that would get her mad about my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that podcast. Yeah, I bet millions of people are going to tune in for it. Uh, how was uh, working with Joe Rogan? I was just going to mention Rogan because Rogan had a bit of uh, something to the effect of it's we're, we're only a few years away from everyone having their own channel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, watch my show. It's on. He's, uh, yeah, Rogan's great. He's a, he's a, he's a, a what's the word? A very passionate young man. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he was a blast to work with. I haven't seen him in a while, but I, I, I'm kind of out of the loop down here in Arizona. Was he daring you to eat odd things at all? No, no, no. But we did on on the man show. We did have uh, the kid that they use. He was uh, some kind of production assistant, but he was the one that had to test every, you know. Uh, not food product, but any time someone had to eat something as a stunt, he had to test it first for four hundred and fifty bucks a week. <laughs> <laughs> while, while these people are getting fifty grand if they do it. Uh, but yeah, no, no, he never, uh, never, uh, never tried to get me to eat anything weird, other than uh, ayahuasca root. <laughs> what the hell's that? It's a mushroom. Oh, uh, hallucinogen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't know about any of that stuff up here in Utah. Well, you're big tweakers up there. I guess that's pretty much everywhere now. Yeah. Yeah, the amount of tweak that goes on up there is kind of frightening. Such an awful... Have you ever done tweak? Yeah, that's uh, late 80s, early 90s. I had a few run-ins with it. But it's, it's a drug that you could be the most uptight, you know, strict Mormon never touch a dr- drop of alcohol, cigarette in your life, and you could do tweak one time and feel like you have to check into a, a, a clinic, <laughs> a celebrity rehab with Dr. Drew. It's, just, it's so devastating to you, like uh, mentally, physically. Just was so, such a, I can't see ever getting addicted to it. 
So you are saying to the kids out there listening to this show, say no to Tweak. Yeah, and yeah, do a lot of mushrooms. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I used to do that. There was was a point, uh, you know, right around the uh, Janet Jackson, even before the Janet Jackson thing, where you do these clear channel radio stations, these corporate stations, and they were so. Uh, you'd get a comedy club, and what they'd do is they'd work out a deal with a- any station they could t- could get you on. So you'd do this, you'd wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and you'd have to do five radio shows, maybe one or two of which you're appropriate for. <laughs> but you'd still have to do the other ones, which made no sense. I'm doing some light FM, you know, soccer mom channel, and they say, oh, don't talk about this and this and this and this and this. And I go, well, th- all that's left is, like, ad, uh, you know, Ad, pronouns and adverbs is you, you t- that's all I talk about is this 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 and this. So instead, I'd just go on and be completely clean and just talk about my life without any jokes and talk about how I quit school and it was the best thing I've ever done and I've used drugs rec- recreationally for you know twenty some years and never had a problem. It's just like the whole, everything your your parents don't want your kid to hear on the way to school. And by the end, they'd go, wow, I wish, I wish you just said fuck a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, have you had uh, any job offers, like in television, that, you know, uh, every comedian seems like they end up on TV with uh, a make-believe really hot wife and kids, anything, anything oh, no, like that? I was, I was never a sitcom guy. I can't act for shit, first of all. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I was... And everything I've done on on American television, except for the Showtime special, which was uncensored, was you know weak at best. Like the Man Show is obviously horrible, but even doing stand up on on Comedy Central, just regular stand up, they they hack you to death. You know, it, it's not just censorship with language. It's you know you can't talk about drugs unless it's a negative. And I had a pro suicide bit that was basically you know. You know, life is like animal porn, <laughs> not for everyone. Uh, but uh, you know, basically, that life life is like a movie. If you've sat through more than half of it and it sucked every second so far, it's probably not going to get great right at the very end <laughs> and make it all worthwhile. No one should blame you for walking out early. So it was a vaguely pro suicide bit, but I couldn't do that because uh, if, this, if someone killed themselves because of it, they could get sued. Oh, jeez. It was just boiled down to, you know, I'd do my act, and it was like doing NASCAR at 35 miles an hour. It was just took all the teeth out of it. Well, on one of your uh, shows, I saw you were talking, uh, you you were in the U.K., I believe, and you were talking about... Uh, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a different beast altogether. So yeah, uh, they, they, they don't censor anything over there. But you, you went to start talking about uh, child pornography, and people in the crowd are like, no, don't. <laughs> Stop right now! <laughs> I didn't say I didn't say they liked everything. I said they don't censor everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you get hooked up on the with the BBC? I, I started. I, I did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland uh, in 2002, and just rolled from there. I had a great manager. He's he's a Scotsman himself. He lives over here now, but at the time he was over there. And he's just a—he was a monster. I, I did my first pitch meeting with the BBC from bed. <laughs> they all hung over, and he goes, "I'll just set up the meeting here." And I didn't get out of bed. They just <laughs> sat at the foot of my bed, and, and we pitched TV shows. And I—and they—they they bought it. So how long did that run? Oh, that, st- the first one was a pilot. I, I just did a, a segment on a show called Newswipe over there. And that ran six episodes, with one episode being a best of the six episodes of other five episodes. Yeah, the TV's kind of nutty over there. Folks, you're tuned to 90.9 FM KRCL. Circus Brown here with Doug Stanhope live on the phone. Uh, Doug, anything you want to plug other than your show coming up tomorrow night? Nope. No, that's pretty much it. You feel good about this? Yeah, yeah. If, uh, if this is going out on your podcast, you could go to DougStanhope.com for all of my 
upcoming tour dates. And, uh, yeah, show up drunk and take the next day off. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Doug. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> you coming to the show? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Doug. Hey, have a good one, and uh, we'll see you Saturday. All right. Sounds All good. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.